The fuel capsule itself will be compressed by the X-rays emitted from the whole round. Uh, it will implode to a size about the width of a human hair and achieve pressures and densities that are on the order of 100 billion atmospheres and 50 million degrees, about five times hotter than the sun. Here we are in the master oscillator room of the National Ignition Facility. This is the only place in NIF where we actually have a laser. There's actually not one laser, but three individual lasers that actually create very low energy pulses at about a thousand pulses per second. Uh, from here on on, they actually travel through very small optical fibers and they transport the pulses through a set of control chassis uh, where we create the particular temporal shape of the laser pulses before we send it into our large amplifiers. Here is where all the beams from the master oscillator room get amplified up to an energy of 4 million joules. Once the beams travel uh, out of this uh, amplification system, they form an array of 96 beams on this side of the facility and another 96 beams on the other side of the facility. Uh, the NIF laser that we're actually looking at right now was designed in the 90s with the state-of-the-art electro-optical technology and amplifier pump technology that was available at that point in time. If we would redesign or rebuild a laser with the same capabilities, the same energy and power, at this point in time, we would probably choose for a laser that is much more compact. Actually, a laser that could fit an entire capability inside in a box that is about 30 feet long. It could fit on the back of a truck. Yeah. So here we're looking at the major components or the NIF laser system. Right over here, we have the flash lamps that provide a very intense white light pulse that in turn gets absorbed by the neodymium atoms inside these laser slabs. So together they form the active medium that is going to take the very precisely shaped pulses and give them the energy that is needed to basically, I mean, compress the target after they have gone through multiple amplification passes. So these the columns or uh, beam tubes. So each column actually uh, transports a set of four NIF beams uh, from the level below us to the top of the building and to the basement of the building where the beams are then transmitted or are reflected towards the target bay where they are then sent by another set of mirrors to the center of the target chamber. Now we are here in the target bay of the National Ignition Facility. Here is where all that energy and power that is created by the laser is focused together in the center of the target chamber. Here we're looking at the final optics of the NIF. Here is where the uh, infrared beams from the laser are converted to ultraviolet and focused to a tiny little spot on the inside of the whole round in the target chain. This is the equipment where we uh, create our ignition targets. The targets are basically inserted and cooled to a temperature of near zero, about 20 kelvins. Uh, at that time, we actually can load diffusion fuel, the deuterium and the tritium fuel, inside the coal target and basically create a single crystal layer, about 70 uh, nanometers thick, on the inside of the capsule, inside the coal target. So here is a, a model of an actual NIF ignition target. So the red bead at the center is the fuel capsule. Uh, it's a small plastic capsule that contains a frozen layer of de de deuterium and tritium in the center. The fuel capsule itself will be compressed by the X-rays emitted from the whole round. Uh, it will implode to a size about the width of a human hair and achieve pressures and densities that are on the order of 100 billion atmospheres and 50 million degrees, about five times hotter than the sun. 
So this is a target really where we can actually uh, control the fusion reaction on Earth and actually use it to convert mass into energy.